assalamu alaikum uh, and very good evening everybody hope you are okay at this corona pandemic uh, i am professor motin as you know uh, our today's topics i uh, thank you very much uh, genesis university for giving me opportunity to say or deliver my regular lectures uh, initially actually i was giving lectures on sunday but there are some problem of my personal reasons i shifted my class from sunday to tuesday so i think it's okay with you uh, so today's topics uh, very important for your exam uh, acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion uh, this two topics uh, uh, from the disease of the middle ear this is the heart of these topics actually if you think of the disease of the middle ear there are four topics important for your exam one is acute otitis media number two is otitis media with effusion number three is chronic suppurative otitis media or csom and number four auto sclerosis if you know only this four of uh, disease and it will cover about 95% of your middle ear disease so it's very simple all questions will coming up written paper oral exam you know ospi what it may be so most of this from this four topics so today actually i will discuss about these two topics acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion let us start with acute otitis media now what do we know about otitis media as i said infection or inflammation of the external ear is called otitis externa infection inflammation of the middle ear cleft or middle ear is called otitis media infection of the inner ear is called labyrinthitis so these are the basic three things so we are talking about today acute otitis media so otitis media may be acute onset or maybe chronic so today we will discuss about acute otitis media before that discussion of otitis media otitis media with effusion or chronic suppurative otitis media always remember this diagram always remember this picture always remember this anatomy of the middle ear cleft before understanding acute otitis media or ome or csom this is the basic anatomy of the middle ear cleft comprises of tympanic cavity and its two important structure anteriorly and posteriorly anteriorly is your eustachian tube and posteriorly is your aridus covering the mastoid antrum and mastoidal cells so middle cleft comprises of tympanic cavity your eustachian tube opening and the inner wall and posteriorly is your aridus at antrum mastoid antrum and mastoid ear cells now the main culprit of causing disease of the middle ear either acute otitis media or ome or csom the main culprit is your what is your tube this is the key role playing villain of the middle ear disease who is the villain villain is the is your tube so that is the culprit causing all this problem that's why you have to understand this tympanic cavity as you know the lining epithelium of the tympanic cavity is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium so they are mucus secreting epithelial lining so they are secreting some mucus and that mucus is with the mucociliary activity they are wafting out from the tympanic cavity through the eustachian tube to the nasopharynx that's why if there is any problem with the ciliary activity if the eustachian tube is 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 dysfunctioning or it block then all the problem is coming up then the pressure changes the, then the middle ear ear is absorbing and causing lots of inflammation and leading to all the problem with this disease that's why eustachian tube is important as you know eustachian tube is usually 36 mm length it has got cartilage part 2/3 and bony part 1/3 tympanic part is 1/3 and cartilage part is 2/3 opening of the eustachian tube 
by the tensor tympani or levodopalatinal muscles, uh, tensor uh, filipalatinal levodopalatinal muscles, and they are usually closes. But when we swallow or eat and drink, they usually open up and they drain the fluid as well as they uh, supply the air to the middle cavity for good conduction. So this is the basic principle understanding otitis media. Now, so acute otitis media is, is acute, this is a definition, is acute bacterial infection of the medullary cleft following most commonly a viral upper respiratory tract infection. So this is the acute bacterial infection of the medullary cleft following usually or most commonly a viral upper respiratory tract infection. That means most of the patients with acute media they have a, a recent flu or cold or allergy, you know, and then the virus first attack and that virus is eventually invade the bacteria to cause this disease. How it happens, I mean, actually, and the problem is again saying that infects the middle cleft and middle cleft comprises of all this, as I say. So this is the common definition of acute otitis media is infection of bacteria following viral attack. Who are the risk factors for acute otitis media? Why there is acute otitis media? There are many factors contributing acute otitis media. Number one is genetic factors. So this is for your uh, MCQ, for your uh, oral examination, as well as for your short essay question paper, because acute media is important topics. So you have to write down very shortly that there are some factors. Who are the common sufferers of acute media? If I say ACE is con uh, considered for, if you consider ACE, the most commonly it occurs in children, in one year old child, six months and above, mostly six months to nine months, they have very much attack of acute otitis media. And why there is acute otitis media? Because of the, they have got flu, there's some ischian tube dysfunction, there's a positional ischian tube uh, is, uh, is, is very horizontal, then the oblique, and genetic factors also contribute to the ischian tube. Because as I said, this is the culprit. So there are many genetic factors related to the length, shape, size of the ischian tube, and potency of the ischian tube. And that's how they got this acute otitis media or OME. So that's why genetic factor is important. There are some race like Indian, Americans, uh, Australian Aborigines, they got some problem with this uh, issue tube and they got more infection. So these are genetic. Number two is your environmental factor causing acute otitis media. What are those like your patients who have socioeconomic condition, low socioeconomic status, poor housing, poor sanitation, overcrowded area, they have more chance of this uh, acute media, breastfeeding. Now, how does it work? Breastfeeding, two way. Breastfeeding prevent acute media by giving immunity to the child. Because breastfeeding, uh, the breast milk has got some uh, antibodies, as you know. They prevent acute media by giving immunity. On the other hand, on the other hand, breastfeeding is the culprit of getting acute otitis media. How? If the mother is not feeding the child on upright position, because most of the, of the mother in our country, they are lying in the bed and they, the child is, or the, uh, the child is uh, just uh, lying with the mother and they try to take breast milk on lying condition and the child has got uh, more regurgitation of the, of the milk uh, and from the throat toward the eastern tube, the ear, and they got infection. That's why breastfeeding acts in two different ways. There are some uh, other anatomical factors that can cause acute otitis media, like your nasal septal deviation, like your anatomical facial anomalies, like your, some disease, like your Cousin disease, like your Down syndrome, like your Trisha Collin syndrome, like all these features, they have some uh, anatomical facial skeletal problem uh, leading to clay palate. Important factor is clay palate. They got dysfunction of the eastern tube. Septal deviation, nasal polyps, nasal allergy, all can contribute acute otitis media. Why? Because of the eustachian tube, as I said, is the culprit, is the villain dysfunction. Now, what are the pathology? How it happens? How do the pathogenesis of acute otitis media? Uh, as I said, this is the first is the, the virus is coming up. The common viral pathogens are the uh, you know respiratory sensitive virus, the rhinovirus, 
adenovirus, influenza virus, parainfluenza virus. These are the common viruses that come up, and that virus acts in two ways. One is they reduce the immunity of the patient, they, they uh, disturbance or they hamper the ciliary activity of the excision tube, and there's a more, less ciliary activity leading less wafting out of the ciliary uh, secretion from the uh, middle clear and also the uh, blockers of the excision tube. The viral, as well as the, as the immunity is uh, low down, so they invade the bacteria, and then the bacteria is coming up after viral. Common bacterial pathogens are your Haemophilus influenzae, Diplococcus pneumoniae or Streptococcus pneumoniae, Bernheim like Cateralis, uh, Staphylococcus aureus. These are the common pathogens or bacteria. And then, how do they get in the middle clay? These bacteria or viruses we usually give three routes of getting infection to the middle clap or middle gap. What are those roads? Number one is through the institution tube. Through the institution tube, they get in from the nether branch to the institution tube to the middle gap. Number one way. Number two way is blood burn. From the blood burn, hematogenous spread. And number three is there if there is any hole in the eardrum or there is a grommet insertion in previous OME patient, so the infection can spread through the grommet. Sometimes the, the child is getting water inside, diving under water, they got infection. So these are the, the three ways of getting infection of the medullary clay. Now, what are the clinical stages of acute autosomia? This question we ask this question in the exam. So there are the patient passes in different stages. Stage one is tubal occlusion. Stage two is pre-perforative stage. Stage three is perforation or perforative stage, and stage four, stage of resolution. What happens? Initially, due to the acute infection flu, the ischian tube is a little bit retracted or a block. So, due to blockage of the ischian tube, patient has got a bit blocking sensation in the ear, sudden dull ear, slightly pain in the ear. If you have a look to the eardrum, you get eardrum is a little bit retracted, slightly retracted. So, this is just one. Once the more and more retraction, the ear in the middle ear is absorbed, the bacteria is coming up, virus is coming up, and causing congestion of the middle ear mucosa causing some fluid in the middle of mucosa and uh, due to bacterial dissemination, causing infection and flare up. That means the patient has got temperature, severe pain in the ear, or otalgia, high rate of temperature, malaise, patient have vomiting, patient have vertigo. So all this com uh, complaint coming in this stage too. And if you have a look to the eardrum, you will get, I will show it later, uh, congested eardrum. So these are the stage three. This P, perforative stage, but have very toxic. And stage four, uh, sorry, stage three is a perforative stage. That means due to the pressure effect, suddenly the eardrum wraps up and release all the discharge or pus, and that reduces the temperature and pain. And stage four is after, after all this discharge coming out, the eardrum again heals. It's called stage of resolution. So these are the clinical features. Patient has got fever, pain, deafness, is a conductive deafness and person have discharge if there is any perforation. But before perforation, no discharge. But pain increasing in size, increasing pain, temperature increases. So this is pre perforative stress. Now, if in case of children, how do you understand? Because this acute autosomy is more common in children. So the patient's children is very toxic, irritating, not eating and drinking well, you know, jumping like that, pulling the pina, restless, not feeding. The, the child is not eating and drinking, throwing all the uh, plays. You look at this, the picture, throwing all this. So irritating uh, child and sleepless night. We are discussing the exam. A uh, two years old child was sleeping, suddenly develops, uh, become restless, rise of temperature, putting the pina, high rise of temperature. What is the diagnosis? So diagnosis is acute otitis media. So these are the features of, this, of the child having acute autosomia. Look at this picture. Child may have vomiting, temperature, pulling the pina. Okay, look at this. So this uh, scenario of, of children. So if you have a look to the eardrum in acute autotis media, pre perforative stress, stress two, look at this. The whole eardrum is, uh, is normal, color of the eardrum is pearly white, but is, is now is very much red, inflamed, congested eardrum, lots of blood vessels all around, and very angry looking eardrum. 
So Vietnam is looking very much red, inflamed, congested, angry looking. Okay. Uh, eventually, due to imminent perforation, before perforation, look at this. The Yardam may be ballooning out. Look at this, ballooning out. That means anytime it can rupture. So this is the situation. Now, after that, if it ruptures, then suddenly the patient got lots of discharge coming out from the ear with relief of temperature and pain. So it's a classical scenario of acute otitis media. Uh, science depends on stages. If you do, as I said, stage one, detected TM, stage two, rate inflamed congested eardrum, stage three is a perforation with discharge, and stage four is a resolution. So these are the way. And patients have temperature, uh, initially uh, low temperature and high rate high temperature, but after perforation, temperature down. Okay. If you do a renal really test, you'll get renal really test negative on the affected side and whatever is lateralized to the affected side. That means conductive hearing loss. If you uh, give pressure to the mastoid area, you'll get tenderness of the mastoid. Uh, do you want to do PT impedance? Well, in children, never. But in case of adult patient, if you want to have a uh, look to that, you can do pure nodogram and impedance autogram. Uh, but it's so obvious clinically, you don't even need, but you can do. <clears throat> you'll get conductive deafness, and in impedance, you'll get uh, sometimes a flat B or type C temporogram. Now, how to treat acute otitis media? Now, this is a general principle that you will give a patient a very bed rest, comfortable temperature, uh, uh, comfortable room for bed rest. Antibiotic, in case of children, uh, co amoxiclop or amoxicillin. co amoxiclop is a classical drug for acute otitis media. You can also give separate exitil, but usually co amoxiclop syrup form in case of children, in case of adult patient, you'll give uh, child 375 milligram, adult 625 milligram, three times daily for seven days. You can give analgesic paracetamol or dichloric sodium. You can give nasal decongestion in the form of uh, Xylomatazolin or antazolol nasal drops or steroid nasal, nasal spray. You can also give, routinely, we usually give antihistamine. Uh, these are the treatment of, of acute otitis media. Uh, but suppose a patient has come after perforation, they know what to do. If the patient has come after perforation, believe me or not, because the abscess is already drained spontaneously. So in this situation, patient temperature gone, patient's uh, pain gone, then what to do? Only you have to clean the ear. So after perforation, the patient has to discharge, clean the discharge or oral toileting, and then give some antibiotic systemic as well as uh, local ear drops and nasal decongestion. Okay. Now, when you will get surgery? In acute water smithy. So surgery, if the patient has got incruciating pain, you are giving antibiotic, giving a nasal decongestion, painkiller, analgesic, but still it's not improving. That means it's not resolving or even it's not rupturing. Then what to do? Or even patient has got with this, patient has got facial palsy. Patient has got intracranial or extracranial complications. So in this scenario, you have to give surgery or treatment. What is that surgery? Simple. As the ear drum is under pressure, with full of debris or pass inside. So what to do? You have to go for stab the eardrum. That means myringotomy. You just like you do a myringotomy and drain the pass or abscess. And patient's condition improves. Even facial palsy, patient has temporary, temporary facial palsy, it will improve. So this is surgery. It's myringotomy. That's it. This is all, all about acute otitis media, the principle of treatment. Head of acute otitis media, if, if, if you uh, give treatment, all these, and just follow up the patient. There are some sequelae of, 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 of the evolution of the acrotus media, like it usually completely heals after, after uh, perforation, or there is no perforation, you give antibiotic, patient improve. So that is one fate. Number two fate, you give antibiotic treatment. So as the patient has got yeah, fluid behind the eardrum with pus, so pus is gone, but still fluid is there. So this is called OME. Otis media with vision, patient may have uh, residual OME with that. Then, as the patient has got perforation of the eardrum, draining the pus, but sometimes it, not, it doesn't heal. So, leaving behind a hole in the eardrum. So, this is called perforatory eardrum. 
and this way the patient can lead to chronic otitis media this way patient may have uh, sensory hearing loss how as a complication a patient you are giving treatment it does not respond there is a virulent bacteria they can give some toxin so the bacterial toxin can diffuse through the uh, round window or oval window to the inner area causing uh, inner ear uh, sensory hearing loss or labyrinthitis so this way patient may have sensory hearing loss or ear drum heals but leaving behind a scar in the ear drum scarring ear drum this is called tympano sclerosis if you have a look ear drum you will get some scar in the chalky white color in the ear drum so this is tympano sclerosis or patient have trans complication of acute otitis media that means patient may have extracranial complication patient have intracranial complication extracranial complication like your patient have acute mastoiditis mass mastoiditis mastoid abscess visual abscess cerebellar abscess patient have petrositis leading to gardenigo syndrome or patient may have facial palsy this is a extracranial complication or patient have intracranial complication like meningitis like brain abscess extracranial abscess subdural abscess so these all otitis hydrocephalus like csm so all may happen in acute otitis media but fortunately uh, we identify the patients very quickly the patients are very conscious they usually consult the doctor that's why we hardly get any complication like that but in old old days they have lots of complication but still there are some patients who were in bliss they may ignore this one patient may have this complication facial palsy is and meningitis is very common in children adult patient usually have a very less complication uh, but children has got more complication so these are the complication of acute otitis media and this is the fate of acute otitis media what about the recurrent acute otitis media as you know the patient has got recurrent attack of ear ache ear ache every time 3 4 or 5 6 times attack of acute otitis in children then what to do in this condition we will go for surgery what is the surgery as i said who is the culprit culprit is the issue in tube so we will replace issue in tube that means can we replace can we cut down no the function of issue in tube is to to give air supply drain the uh, secretion from the middle ear so okay i don't like you you are the culprit you are the villain okay i will boycott you i will make another issue in tube what is that very simple so surgery is myringotomy and insertion of grommet so grommet is a ventilation tube small tube we put this one in uh, give a insertion in the eardrum and put a grommet we really do this operation we did this operation in england when uh, i was there because in children they are all cold country so the patient child has got recurrent ear infection parents are very much frustrated with that so we usually do myringotomy and grommet insertion that is surgery medicine uh, sometimes i give though this this group of people do have usually Uh, enlarged adenoid, big tonsils, uh, dysfunctional issue tube. So I usually put this uh, children low dose penicillin uh, in children syrup uh, or tablet uh, or sinke uh, for three months. Nasal decongestion like your steroid nasal spray for three months and antihistamine usually montelukast for two three months. This regime might work or may work. Can prevent recurrent acute otitis media. Uh, there are some also new drugs like. Uh, uh, polyvalent uh, uh, pneumococcal uh, vaccine is called PCV7 vaccine. Now it is on trial. Sometimes they are using in America or England. You can also use this one. So this is the uh, short notes of recurrent acrodotus media. But classical treatment is myringotomy and grommet insertion. Then don't forget this. So that is all about acrodotus media. Uh, now in a nutshell, actually, uh, if I say in one minute. Acute otitis media is acute infection of the middle clave. Usually, uh, virus is coming up caused by bacteria, and this usually patient presents with sudden onset of severe pain in ear. Patient have temperature. Patient have hard of hearing. Patient have vertigo, vomiting, all constant symptoms. Uh, usually, in acute pressure, it rupture with discharge of pus and relieving of pain and temperature. Uh, before perforation, usually patient come up to us. We usually give antibiotic, nasal decongestant, antihistamine. Uh, but if including pain or complication, we go for myringotomy and, and drain the pus. Uh, patient come late with this, or uh, there's some complication of this. 
we asked this question in the exam, like a three fourths of whole child presents with uh, past a sleepless night, crying, high rise of temperature, pain in the ear. What is the diagnosis? So the diagnosis is acute otitis media. So that's all about that. And most important uh, dysfunction is the estrogen tube dysfunction, and that is the culprit. Okay, now chronic otitis media. Chronic otitis media is defined as a chronic inflammation of the middle cleft, including the mucosa, uh, timbering membrane, or ossicles. And chronic otitis media is subdivided into, as you know, the suppurative and non suppurative otitis media. Now, otitis media deficiency is a non suppurative chronic otitis media. So, only otitis media is usually divided into one is separative, another is non separative Separative otitis media, as they know, the two types one is tuberculin type or set variety or mucosal type, and another is atrochondral type or unset variety or squamous type. Non separative otitis media is our otitis media with efficient. Today's discussion. Okay, so this is OME. OME is otitis media deficient. Now, it is an inflammation of the middle cleft. And this definition, I, I just quoted, I, I wrote this definition in my book. And please read this definition. This is the classical definition of your OME. The inflammation of the middle cleft and accumulation of fluid behind an intact eardrum due to negative middle ear pressure resulting from eustachian tube dysfunction. Again, the villain, the culprit is eustachian tube. Don't forget this name. In any ear disease, acute otitis media, chronic otitis media, OME, the culprit is eustachian tube. So it is inflammation of the middle ear cleft and accumulation of fluid in the middle ear cleft behind an intact ear drum, resulting from negative middle ear pressure due to dysfunction of the eustachian tube. This is a classical definition of OME or otitis media diffusion. Another name is secretory otitis media. Another name is blue ear. So they, it has got many names. The peak incidence is commonly in children because they have the more problem with the issues and tubes. Two to five years is the peak incidence. About uh, say about 25% of the, of the child with this age can get this OME. These factors, or what are the factors leading to OME? As I said, these are the classical factors. We put this question in the MCQ as well. So don't forget. Number one is recurrent ear infection. Recurrent, sorry, recurrent upper respiratory infection. This can deactivate or, you know, uh, leading to dysfunction of the eustachian tube. One is your recurrent viral infection, bacterial infection, or flu or cold. Then the second culprit is your nasopharyngeal adenoid. That means adenoid in children. Okay? So enlarged adenoid in children, as the adenoid lies in the nasopharynx, and that is the, in the nasopharynx, the opening of the eustachian tube, the lateral wall of the nasopharynx, opening the eustachian tube. So that can dis block the eustachian tube. And also they, from the adenoid, they're giving you a source of bacteria, source of virus. Sometimes one uh, 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 English writer, they wrote these uh, topics that adenoid causes OME, not due to blockage of the eustachian tube, rather due to supply of bacteria and virus to the nasopharynx. So that's why I'm saying the enlarged adenoid is one of the important factors of OME. Then other nasopharyngeal mass or tumor, like juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, like nasopharyngeal cancer, they can also have OME in adult patient or older patient. So nasopharyngeal lesion, adenoid, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, antroconal polyp, okay or natural carcinoma that causes OME. Then there is clay palate, Down syndrome patient, they cause a dysfunction of the eustachian tube. Uh, nasal allergy, septal deviation, all causes OME. Now, how it happens? Why there's fluid? As I said, normal lining, look at this, very simple. Normal lining of the middle clay is pseudostratified ciliated polymer epithelium. So they are, they are the lining uh, epithelium has got tendency to secret some mucus. So this is called mucus secreting epithelial lining. And they also have some goblet cell. So constantly like wax, constantly they are secreting this mucus in the middle of the lining. But that 
secretion is constantly draining out by the ciliary activity or opening of the eustachian tube. So if at any regions the eustachian tube is, is blocked, so they fail to drain out the secretion from the medullary cleft. So due to negative medullary pressure, sorry, due to the eustachian dysfunction or blockage of the eustachian tube, they resulting in the air in the medullary absorbed. So there is negative medullary pressure. They give more pressure to the lining mucosa and they are more hyperactive. They secrete more mucus as well as the goblet cell activity increased and that goblet cell secretes uh, secretion or mucus, which is very rich in proteins, glycoproteins, mycoproteins, uh, some in intermediators, and that is the glue. Okay, so this is the sequence of glue here. But eventually, the issue of dysfunction is, is regained its function and that fluid easily drains. So there is continuous resolution or drainage of the fluid. This is the normal pathway, pathogens of OME. So how this patient presents to you? In case of adult, in case of children, different. Because children, if it has got adenoid, if it has got OME, the child will have nasal obstruction, mouth breathing, dripping of saliva, snoring at night, and for OME, and eventually the adrenal, these are the adrenal symptoms, but eventually they cause OME. So the, in OME means there's fluid in the middle ear, so they have some problem with hearing loss. So if the small child, gradually their language is going down, the language development is, is hampered, their speech is hampered, or the adult child going to school, but eventually they have the hearing loss, so they're not attentive to the teachers, their IQ is going down, behind the watch television, they try to raise the volume of the television. So in this way, you understand the child has got OME or hearing problem, okay? Uh, and in the adult, actually, the patient, the complaints of uh, some blocking sensation in the ear, something moving, because when you lie down like that, the fluid is moving. So something moving, popping in the, in the ear, some optional pain in the ear, and also they got some uh, hearing loss or deafness. And if we examine the patient's ear, how will understand that person of the OME? Now, normal ear drum is, is partly white color, but in OME, there is a fluid inside, so ear drum is featureless. Dull ear drum, yellow, orange yellow color, yellow color, yellow amber color ear drum. There may be retracted ear drum. There may be some uh, balls ear drum, or there may be some ear, multiple ear bubbles, or there may be ear and fluid level. So many things happens when you have a look to the eardrum. Look at this. Look at the, the, look at this, the fluid behind the eardrum. Look at this, there's a yellow amber color, or bluish color, and this, this part is some with balls out. So these are the classical features of OME. Look at this here also. This is a kind of light still there, but this all this fluid, this, you see the fluid behind the eardrum look like this. Uh, slight congestion here. So these are the features of OME. Now, if you do a really test, you will get any negative and however is attached to the affected side. If it is bilateral OME, then you get really negative on both sides and however may be central. Now, and you have to show it is OME mark. As the reason of OME, you have to also look for the nose. So have a look at the nose, person may have another allergy, person may have another polyps, person may have septal deviation, and have a uh, go look to the down of the nasopharynx with your PNS mirror, or with a flexible nasal laryngoscopy to try to find out is the adenoid, is there any nasopharyngeal tumor, uh, antrochromal polyp, angiofibroma, all this. So yeah, this is a routine examination of the nasopharynx to rule out the cause of OME. Now, the most important investigation for exam, this is the exam question, that OME, how to confirm your diagnosis by simple impedance audiometry and pure tonodogram. So this is the pure tonodogram you'll get uh, the, uh, this is a bone conduction normal, air conduction down, and the air bone gap. So this is a conductive hearing loss with air bone gap. And if you do impedance autogram, so this is a, com uh, com a conductive hearing loss, this is bone conduction normal at 20 level, decibel level, and air conduction down 40 decibel. So the air bone gap is about 20 decibel. So the air patient has got a 20 decibel conductive deafness. So this is the uh, pure tonogram finding, the bone conduction normal, air conduction going down, and we are the airborne gap of 20 decibel. So this is the classical features of OME, conductive deafness. You'll get a impedance autogram, you'll get a flat type B tympanogram. This is also slightly blocked 
uh, you can say type C, but still, uh, as this uh, negative side, a little will peak, but still, so this is type B or like this, your uh, autogram you will get. So, classical, no OME, you will get, get type B flat team program that we want to know from you in exam. So what is the finding of uh, uh, impedance autogram in OME or PTA? Okay, so this is PTA conductive deafness and impedance flat type B team program, or you can get type C team program. Uh, routinely in children, we will ask for this X ray. X ray, soft tissue, nasopharynx, lateral view. X ray, soft tissue, nasopharynx, lateral view. You will get inky soft shadow in the nasopharynx, obstructing the nasopharyngeal airway. So, this is a adenoid X ray and less adenoid. So, this is the classical features of, of OME in children. You will definitely will get a big tone cells, definitely you'll get a big adenoid. And if you go to impedance, you'll get flat. If you go to PTA, you'll get conductive hearing loss. Uh, this FOL actually, if you want to do another phase, you can go for FOL. Now, what is the treatment of OME? This is the question asked in the exam. The first thing is, uh, in England, America, uh, they usually observe. That means, as I said, actually, there is continuous resolution of the OME, so we can wait three months. But sometimes it's not logical, you know. What I do, I don't go for operation right away. I do observe the patient and we give some medical treatment. In the form of, we give low dose antibiotic like penicillin in children. <clears throat> uh, but in case of adult, actually we give a short dose antibiotic, uh, although it's got no rule because it's not an infective disease, OME. So still we'll give some, uh, to gain the function of the children too, sometimes we give antibiotic. Many of the doctors give antibiotic. But in children, we give low dose antibiotic for long term, for, for two to three months, penicillin. And then steroid nasal drop or spray we give for children or adult. And antihistamine, like Montelukast, we give for children or adult. This is a classical way and observe how it goes. If it improves, okay, fine. If not improve, then go for operation. So medical treatment in the form of antibiotic, steroid nasal drop spray, antihistamine. Uh, and, and in this way, we observe this patient. Observation means we will wait and see, we will not give any treatment, no. We will observe and give some medical treatment and see how it goes. If not improvement, then go for surgery. But there are some situations like the patient has got gross uh, adenoid, the patient has got uh, huge stone seals causing sleep apnea, you know. So there's no way of waiting for the uh, for observation or watchful waiting. Just go for operation straight away. Like big stone seals, big adenoid, OME, patient, uh, parents are very worried about their uh, children. Well, doctor, my uh, child is not getting good at his school, you know, his performance is going down, uh, raise his volume, uh, watching television. So in this situation, we can go for straight away for operation like your uh, adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy and myringotomy and insertion of bromate. So classical treatment of body OME is myringotomy and insertion of myringotomy and drain the fluid and insertion of bromate. That is a classical treatment of OME. Uh, and as the, the region is uh, adenoid and tonsil, Patient has got sleep apnea, snoring at night, so go for adenoid on to me. Plus, marital government is not. What about the adult patient? In adult patient, uh, if the patient has got OME, have you looked at the nose? If the patient has got another allergy, another polyp, septal deviation, so you have to correct this one. Uh, initially, we give medical treatment. If it fails, then go for surgical treatment like septoplasty, if the need uh, face operation with marital to me and insertion of government. Suppose a patient has got a Z patient like uh, 60 years old or even 20 years old patient has OME and suspicious uh, cancer in the, in the nasopharynx. So in this way, you can also go for marigotomy and collect the fluid for cytological examination. But this is not for you actually. You are, for you people, treatment of OME is, uh, we can uh, go for medical treatment, uh, low dose antibiotics, steroid nasal drop spray, antihistamine, and wait, if not improved, then go for operation like marigotomy, and insertion improvement. But if the patient has got any reason of that, like big tonsils, big adenoid, separate deviation, nasal poly, and we have to correct this one according to its merit, like patient needs septoplasty or polyps, you know, removal of polyps. So this is the treatment plan of OME. So this is the classical uh, tube we usually put in. Uh, we usually uh, put in just from the entry infra quadrant. Uh, and then we drain the fluid and put this from it. We don't have two parts. 
this part is outside and another part is inside the material and this is the hole you can that's why saying excision tube the second excision tube this is the uh, grommet so this is what is going in middle layer and this part is outside and this is the hole here so this will ventilate the middle layer this is another one the different color actually i can also use white as well as blue color uh ventilation tube into inter quadrant okay now what is the problem with this grommet and now this is another one uh this is a t tube actually now why t tube actually if the patient has got uh grommet insertion once and after grommet extrusion patient got recurrent infection again that means when grommet is out the grommet usually stays six months one year even some two years after extrusion of grommet Uh, if the patient got recurrent infection, every time put grommet two three times I put grommet, but again got infection. So in this uh, patients, we usually put a special type of grommet. It's called T tube, like T shape. So this is the flange actually, and this is the stem. So what happened during putting inside? Just he close this this one, put this uh, inside the ear drum, and then it go like this. So it will stay there for long time, about three, four, five, six months. Sorry, six years. So this is called T tube for The chronic dysfunction of the excision tube, we can put. This is regular happens in uh, cold countries like England, America, or Sweden. So, fed up grommet. Uh, grommet usually stays there for six months, one year, two year, and then they usually extrude. Sometimes grommet uh, will not extrude, giving recurrent infection, and then this season we have to take it out by forcefully. Usually, grommet extruded on its own way. uh so uh thank you very much but now what did you learn actually about the oem so oem is a condition this is a non supportive water smithia is a due to chronic dysfunction of the excision tube there is uh negative middleware pressure and then there is accumulation of fluid the fluid is coming from the lining epithelium of the uh, middle layer uh, clef this uh, ciliary ciliary epithelium they produce some secretion of mucin or mucus and also goblet cell they secretes some fluid and usually uh, they usually drains but usually not then patient may uh, uh, presenting with conductive hearing loss uh, children has got uh, speech problem delayed speech school problem iq problem uh, lots of problem children so we have find out either the child has got adenoid or tonsil big adenoid big tonsil so we have to treat the patient oemi patient actually ंग Whoever is lateralized to the affected side, and PTA will go uh, will give conductive hearing loss, and impedance will give a flat type B tympanogram. Don't forget that. So these are the features. Even the OSP examination, uh, we will give a graph of one patient having conductive hearing loss, another impedance with flat tympanogram. So we'll ask what is this your diagnosis? Read the uh, audiogram, give your finding, and what is the diagnosis? So this is OEM. So we may will be asked in different way in your short essay question paper, in your uh, uh, OSPI, IVA examination. That's a don't forget this one. I think uh, that's all today. Uh, inshallah, uh, next week, inshallah uh, tomorrow, uh, next uh, Saturday, or that is media short essay question paper. It will be complicated uh, in next Tuesday, eight to nine p.m. Uh, media CSYM. Thank you very much. Uh, stay safe and healthy. Bye bye now.